The scenario we chose for this demo is joining ad impressions, ad clicks, and historical user data into a single data set. In this case, we have three sources of data. One of them is impressions, people watching ads. This is coming from Apache Kafka. Some of the people actually click on the ads they see. This data is coming from Amazon Kinesis. We also have a bunch of historical data on S3. That historical data is very important for us to predict if a user is going to click on an ad. We want to create a data set with those three pieces of data using up SQL and query that data set from Amazon Athena. At this point, I'm switching to the UpSolver user interface. UpSolver ETLs multiple data sources into a single table in Athena. UpSQL is how you define the transformations for the ETL job. UpSQL is based on an ANSI SQL syntax with extensions for streaming use cases. Since there are 25 lines in this query, let's try to break it down into pieces. The first four columns in the select clause appear as fields in the oppression stream and the next three columns are enrichments from other sources. In order to add the enrichment columns, we perform a left outer join. UpSolver automatically creates an index for the right side of the join so the join operation will happen in memory, saving time consuming round trips to S3. So where did I get this click data and user data from? And how did I add them into my query? I declared them here using a with syntax, which is a very common thing to do in SQL. Click data is defined as a mapping between the impression ID and the last time there was a click, and for the user data. I can map the user ID to features like the number of times the user clicked an ad in the last 90 days, the last time there was a click, the last device ID. The SQL includes UpSolver special syntax for streaming. Wait 10 minutes, let's UpSolver know that a click can arrive no later than 10 minutes after the impression. Window 90 days, let's UpSolver know that only the last 90 days of data are relevant and older data should be ignored. So I hope that part makes sense to any transformation in SQL can be done in UpSolver. That transformation will also apply to the visual interface. Any stateful transformation here would work. Let's preview the query's output before running the job to avoid any mistakes along the way. We can see all the required columns exist and there are no errors. Now we can go ahead, run this output and see the data in Athena. We can see here that the table was already created. Let's go ahead and run a query to preview the data. Let's click here to run the query. We can see here the data with the schema we defined several minutes ago using UpSolver using SQL. In this demo, we have implemented a solution for the click prediction use case. This was done using a SQL query in UpSolver and only took a few minutes to complete.